Hello everyone, it's Miranda here with Prima and I'm going to be creating an art journal memory keeping page here in my Prima travel journal. And I know a lot of times these get overlooked because you think they're only for certain purposes or documenting trips, but they're really not. You can use all of your Prima supplies for just about anything and I love to do that. I love to use things in my stash and just have it work for me. So that's what I did here. So I do a lot of journaling in here and I'm showing you what it looks like from the outside. It's a beautiful, beautiful journal. And I have a couple pages in this one and a couple in the other. And this one I made my own inserts, which I did make out of watercolor paper. So right now I'm just grabbing a few different pieces. These are some older releases, some paintables that I had in my stash. And I just liked the powerful girl images and the fact that they were underwater. Um, Everything on this page is symbolic to me. I don't want to go into too much detail, but it is. Everything means something to me. Around every flower at the end, which you'll see, um, I only show a second of me writing on it, but I wrote around the whole thing. I wrote very small. It's very personal, but I just wanted everything to be, you know, my memories, my thoughts, my journal, you know. So I definitely encourage you to make it personal, you know, make this about you It's and make it artsy if you want to. If you don't want to go detailed, you don't have to. You can make this as, you know, ornate or as easy as you want. It's just whatever you want to do and that's what I love about it. That's what I loved about mixed media. I guess I should clarify that. I mean, there's really no wrong or right way. So I'm using that double-sided adhesive. That's the memory hardware from Frank Garcia. And this stuff is so strong. It's not going anywhere. So I knew I could put that down and it would not budge at all. And I cut it down a little bit shorter than my insert. That way some of the white would show. And now I'm just kind of peeling back a little bit with my fingers there. Um, now I'm using some of that clear gesso from Finnebear and Prima, and I, this is like my staple. I cannot live without my clear gesso. It goes on everything. So I'm just going over the entire piece with the clear gesso. This preps for every medium. Otherwise, if you were to pour paints and stuff on there, it would just kind of seep in, and it wouldn't spread around as easily, and I really like for things to spread with water, and that's why I always go with clear gesso. Um, I apologize for having my lovely bracelet there. Um, I think I take it off at some point. So this is an older stamp, and this is a Christine Adolf one, and I love it. It's beautiful. I love all of her stamps, and this one is one of my favorites. So I'm using Black Stays on Ink, and you, as you can see there, I did not take the clear thing off first. So I was going to cut that out, and I was like, no, this is real life. You know, we, we make mistakes as crafters, so um, I want to help to keep that in there and let y'all see that, you know, it's not flawless. We all make mistakes. Um, so I finally got out on the vellum and I'll fussy cut that out. And I really love the way that looks. And you still get to see the background through it, but it's really pretty. And then I'm taking this rose and this is from the Cigar Box Secrets. And it's one of the stamp sets. And I am just stamping that single rose three or four times um, on that same vellum. And then what I'll do is I'll just fussy cut each little piece out as they dry. If you don't like to fussy cut, this is vellum. It's pretty transparent. This one's frosted, um, but they do have a clear, very clear vellum. So you really could just rip around it. You wouldn't have to even be perfect. So I have some ledger paper here. The Prima Ledger Pad is one of my favorites because it just goes with everything. And I'm grabbing some dies. There, so I die cut some leaves, um, a doily, and that star confetti shape, which I love. I've got my impasto paints there, which are a staple. The new Opal Magics in Till Pink and Till Blue. And I'm just going to use my brayer here, and I'm going to roll some in that jade impasto paint and just roll it right onto my surface. I'm not thinking about what I'm doing. I am just covering. The only thing that I did keep in mind is that I didn't want to cover the lady's face on the left. I just really thought her face was striking on that image, on that card, and I wanted her to show. So that's the only thing I did um, to, you know, that's the only thing I put thought into, I guess I should say. So I have a few colors in there. I've got the Mermaid Sparkle, which is one of the Sparks paints, and then I have that Teal Blue 
and the teal pink new opal magic so that's what's in my little palette right there and then I have some white gesso some heavy white gesso which I have watered down I put two or three squirts of water in it before I added it and you can see I had already smeared a little bit on there before I started recording I wanted to see how it looked I guess first um, and it's it's kind of hard to get back in the habit of recording I did live with Prima for a very long time and create with Prima so I did videos a lot and like it's it was so normal now it's like learning to ride a bicycle all over again so if I'm saying um or you know I'm not speaking correctly please just give me um, a few videos to catch back up to speed and get back on my a-game so this is the vintage ephemera which is from Finnebear and it's just pictures old pictures which I love uh, I wish I had that I had like really old photos of my family I could scan that were black and white like this and really cool and I do have a couple but I never end up using them for some reason maybe one day I will but I think these work perfect right here and I love this girl and she reminded me of me and like I said everything has significance even the letter that I'm using on the alpha cards every single thing has significance to me and what I'm going through in life right now kind of the things I'm learning it just really all has significance and I love it so I'm adding a little crown to her head because I think as women we are all queens no matter what we're going through no matter what our struggles are we're still queens we're still princesses we are beautiful and we should be celebrated. So right now I'm just going in with a micro pen and I am adding that on there. And I'm going to take a few pages from a book and this is one of those glue pens that came with the planners and I love it. So I'm adding that. I'm just kind of making a base for my picture to sit on. Just kind of collaging a few things together so that my picture can sit on top of it. So you'll see me play around and I might move things around a little bit. And this glue is pretty flexible until it's dried and then it, it stays put. I have that new washi tape here which is so beautiful and I am not a huge washi tape user ever. Like, I hardly ever use it, but this one is undeniably beautiful. Like, there's just nothing I can say besides I love it. I wanted that butterfly to show definitely, so I put it off to the side. And just the music notes and the dress forms and everything, all these new washi tapes are incredible, and I love them. So I'm using those on this piece, and I don't like to have straight lines, so I'm kind of tearing it to where it, you know, looks a little tattered and worn. And then I'll just fold that around the back. So I'm just going to keep adding that until I'm happy. And I was saying, this is really strong washi tape, which is one of the reasons I didn't ever use it was because I felt like it didn't stick too well, but this one really did. So I'm cutting my doily in half here, and I'm trying to see if I want it to go to the left or to the right and just playing with how it looks. So I'm going to keep moving it around until I feel like I'm happy with it. And I really wanted that butterfly to show, so I was struggling to uh, not cover it up. And then I realized if I just added another piece of washi tape a little further over to the right, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have that problem. So that's what I end up doing. But right now I'm just still adding and collaging some elements. And I'm adding that butterfly now a little bit further over. And you can kind of still see the left wing underneath, and that's completely fine with me. All right, so I'm just layering these on top, and I do I leave one of them showing the ledger side, and then the other side I flip over to show the white side. That way, I have like a nice contrast in colors. And this is definitely my go-to color combo: blues and browns. I can't help it; it just it happens. It's my go-to color combo whenever I'm struggling or I don't have any mojo. I know that if I pull these colors out, I'll usually find some sort of inspiration. So I'm cutting down the sides of the, the um, photo just a little bit because like I said, I wanted that butterfly to show and I just felt like it was a little bit too thick for this particular journal page. This is a small little travel journal and I didn't want the photo to really just overtake everything. 
and not leave me any room for journaling. So, and now I'm just taking my finger, dipping it in the gesso and going around the edges of my photo. And I'm gonna glue that down as well. I'm just gonna let it sit in place, kind of moving it down until I feel like I like where I have it placed. And you can see it's not moving and I love that you can see the shine from those paints. So instead of just using only the impasto paint, I definitely wanted to incorporate some of that opal magic and some of those sparks, that mermaid sparkle, because it's beautiful. And that's just the edge where I cut out that confetti die, and I thought it looked perfect. I started to chuck it and throw it away, and I thought, nope, it's going to go right there on the edge. I try to use every scrap. And when I use these dies, I never use the entire piece. I always end up tearing it. I don't think one time I have ever actually used the entire panel. Um, I just kind of break it apart and add it where I want. So as you can see, I ended up pulling the picture off completely and adding some more of that underneath. I just felt like she needed some more layers under her. And the stars, um, if you know me, you know how much I love outer space and I'm completely enamored with it and fascinated with it. And like, it's my number one passion. I'm always learning more and more and more. I could bore you to death with all of my talk about outer space. These flowers also have special significance, and I don't want to go into why, but even the number I use has a special significance to me, um, but it relates to my mother, and everything is just personal about this, and I, and, I, and I just decided there's like, I create a lot of altered art, and you know, some sometimes that can be personal, you can make that personal, especially if you're making it for someone, but a lot of times my work doesn't have a lot of meaning, and I really decided you know, whether people like this or not, this is for me, and I want to look back at this in, you know, a few years, five years, ten years, and I want to be happy with, you know, what, what I put down here and, and know what this meant to me at that time. So I've even started putting the date on each page, and you'll see that at the very end in the pictures. It's at the very bottom. So I put love this life because I'm learning to love life. Um, I, just, I'm turning, I just turned 33. So I'm learning a lot. I feel like I've gained a lot of wisdom and um, I'm just, I'm really happy with where I'm at right now and I'm not perfect by any means, but I'm definitely learning as I go and I feel so much wiser than I was, you know, a few years ago and I would not take that back for anything. So I definitely put love this life. That was a sentiment that immediately I wanted to use. And I really just wanted to represent strong women here. So I'm taking these leaves here, and even the leaves have significance, and I dip them in alcohol ink, of course. Anybody who ever watches my live shows, you're going to know that, like, I always do that. I have to use alcohol ink. So I put that over there. Now I'm taking those vellum flowers, and I'm just trying to place them. I wanted to incorporate all three that was very necessary, because it's four flowers all together. And I needed it to be four flowers and five leaves on that side. So I was trying my best to figure out how I could make that happen. So you'll see me just kind of fooling around and seeing how it's going to work. And you got to keep in mind, if you take your page out of your travel journal, um, you've got to keep in mind it's going to fold. So don't go over that center line. Also, that ripped, that vellum piece ripped right there. No big deal. You put it right back on there. You cannot tell that ripped at all. So just be gentle if you're using vellum because it is a lot more um, fragile than regular cardstock, especially Prima cardstock. So I'm putting both of those flowers there, gluing those leaves down, and then I have a baby one that I'm going to add, and I'm just going to cut one of the leaves off. That's how I incorporated the five leaves that I wanted to. So I'm adding them in different heights too, and I kind of overlapped that one, which is fine. And I did, and I, I don't know what happened here, y'all, but you'll see on the right side there's a very big black blurry line. I do not know what happened here. It only lasts for about a minute, and I apologize, but you see everything on the left here. So just forgive me, and like I said, let's chalk it up to me learning to ride a bike again, and I don't know what I did wrong. I really don't. Um, I just can't figure it out. So anyway, I'm taking some thread here, just regular sewing thread in white, and I'm just stuffing it up under there. Um, I always love the way that looks, and I tend to usually forget to do it until the end, 
but it's pretty easy to kind of lift any little element up and tuck it in and then just kind of pull some out. So that's the one good thing. It's pretty easy to save. So the I, did, I want to keep this flat, but I wanted one embellishment that was very important to go on here for me, and that's the keyhole um, for multiple reasons. And I really, I just had to add it. As much bulk as it added, I had to add that one embellishment. So that and the heart, the rusted heart in particular, it had to be a rusty heart. So I'm using, you'll see me using little scraps of paper sometimes to get excess glue off. Um, I just like to do that instead of like using, you know, my fingers, keeping them clean if I'm doing something like this or, you know, a paintbrush because I'm prone to leave that out and let it dry. So I colored in her crown because I felt like it just was not showing up without coloring the crown in. So I colored it all the way in black and I'm adding my heart there, my rusty alcohol inked heart. This is a treasured memory stamp set and the pianos have a significance. Um, there's no significance to the circles, but I really like the stain look, so I'm just trying to add those randomly, and then I'm going to add that piano piece in a few different areas, because that has some significance to me right now. But these stamps are so beautiful. All of the treasured memories, I think I have all of them now. Um, I'll do a video one day, and um, my craft room's almost back together, so in the next couple weeks in the next two weeks I'm gonna do a updated craft room tour and a lot has changed and you'll see that I have all those stamps and I'll show each one on the video and let you know just how pretty they are so I'm taking a few Finna Bear stamps just ones I had laying around on my desk and just stamping these are just little circles with script in them and they no rhyme no reason just wanted to add extra to the background and I'm doing it in different sizes. And to me, it just kind of represented like planets and moons and things like that. Um, and this is the sentiment I chose and it's, she won't settle for ordinary. So in order to ink this, what I do is I put it on the edge of the ink pad. Like I want the she want at the top. So I put it at the edge where settle wasn't hitting the ink pad, if that makes sense. So then I'm going to take it again and go to the edge and just put settle four. Some's going to get on the O and then I just wipe that off and then put that there. And then again, I'll just put ordinary on the edge of the ink pad. That way you're not having to like have a mess on there and some of the other letters showing up where you don't want them to. Um, I'm sure that's very basic, but I did want to explain that just in case anyone had never seen it done that way before. I have another stamp set here. This is from Love Clippings, which is not too old of a release. Um, it's not like vintage Prima, but it's, it's a little bit older one. I think it was a Frank Garcia one. And there was a butterfly and a bee. So butterflies are very important to me, and I use them all the time. I think, you know, we all love butterflies, most of us anyway. We all tend to use butterflies, but I actually used a bee as well. Um, so I put that one at the top of that flower and I only needed one. So there you can see I already have the journaling at the top there and I just showed here that I am journaling around. You can see the words, hopefully not decipher, nobody pause it and zoom in or anything. Um, but uh, I just put like how I was feeling and what this meant to me. And then on the back of the page I also wrote very big, like a lot, a lot of journaling. So. It made me happy. So one of the things I always do towards the end is splatter some white paint drops and it's a habit and I think I will always do it. So the heavy gesso is very heavy so I had to put quite a bit of water. I think I put like half and half. So half water and half gesso in order to get it as liquid. And I found using a fan brush works better for me than anything I've ever used. Uh, it definitely gives me better drops. So I'm just going to splatter that on and that is pretty much it. If you all have any questions at all about what I've done or anything at all, let me know if I didn't explain anything correctly. One thing I did add was some corsage pins you might see in the photo under my photo at the very end and I didn't hit film for that. So there it is in the journal and I hope you like it. I hope y'all give your Prima travel journals a chance to be something other than what they're intended to be. And I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching and I'll see y'all later. Bye.